Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the session called Becoming Data Driven, or well, Becoming a Data Driven Organization. Uh, my name is Mandy Chessel. I'm the leader of an open source project called ODPI Algeria. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the background of this project, uh, why we, why we um, created this open source project, um, and the value that uh, can come from, uh, from using it within an organization. Um, the story starts uh, back in 2013. I was working um, with the uh, ING Bank. This is a global bank. Um, and they were interested in building a data lake. Um, and they had a number of requirements because they're a bank. They have um, uh, the, um, a lot of regulations around how they use data. Um, and they were also very concerned that uh, their customer data wasn't um, lost. <laughs> they knew exactly what was happening to it. And it was being used in an ethical way. So we came up with this um, architecture for a data lake uh, that looked at all the different requirements that they needed for data. Um, and uh, um, and it became a very successful architecture within the bank um, and has been used with many different uh, organizations around the world. So I spend a lot of my time working with uh, companies on their data strategy, how they make better use of data um, and uh, ensure that it's properly governed. So the experience that we had with um, the uh, uh, that data lake architecture resulted in um, a, a number of books um, and it was very well received um, um, because it, it helped to guide people on all the decisions that they needed to make. Um, however, there was a problem with it in that it was an awful lot of effort to build. So this is a sort of cross section through the different technologies that are used within a data lake. And at the base, you can see sort of barely standard commercial products, and you can use open source products in those spaces as well. But um, an awful lot of what made the data lake a data lake was actually handwritten components that the organization needed to build. And there was an awful lot of integration between those components um, as well. So data lakes became very expensive to build, even when you had um, a fairly well-defined blueprint to create them. The other thing that we discovered was that as an organization becomes data-driven, everything changes. Um, the way that projects are funded, typically they're funded sort of on application lines. Data-driven organizations need to fund a lateral flow of, of data between the data silos. Um, the the, the uh, uh, and then so then that that, that creates um, a completely new way that uh, sort of uh, resources need to be uh, or, um, uh, need to be distributed around the organisation. Um, it becomes very important that development projects are using uh, real data um, to um, you know in order to test and 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 uh, manage the services that they're building. Um, the uh, regulations around data, such as the GDPR, actually start to combine um, the governance domains between um, the data privacy people, the data governance people, the IT infrastructure people, the security people. And so we need to start bringing uh, that metadata together that they're using the policy metadata. Um, and so what, what's happening is that a huge number of tools used by many different professions need to be integrated in order for that knowledge that's being created by one group of professionals can be shared and used and linked to the knowledge from other professionals. And that 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 body of knowledge is what we call metadata. Um, and so having gone through this process with ING and a number of other very large companies, uh, we wrote another book <laughs> that basically said you know, this is the reason that data lakes are very hard to write, it's hard to create, and also why it's hard for an organization to become uh, um, a data-driven organization. Um, and one of the things that uh, was, in, was in, this book, in this book was um, the idea of a maturity model for an organization, here we are, I'll show that to you, um, that actually starts from you know sort of where is my data that's this very low um data data awareness 
And then sort of how should that, then knowing how it should be governed, that's governance awareness, then starting to embed that into all the technologies that are working with the data. Uh, that's embedded governance, then building up to allowing the business users to own the settings of governance. So as they make changes to those settings, uh, they, um, the data lake and the other processes that are managing data change with it. And then finally, something called data citizenship, which uh, comes from Forrester, is the idea that um, all employees are enabled with the data that they need and they work with data as a, as a normal part of their operation. So these different levels um, had different types of uh, technology integration requirements between them. And when you started to look at any organization, you realize that uh, this was a huge um, requirement to get all this metadata and tools integrated. Um, and so what we proposed was uh, we need to use an open source project to link together all the different metadata standards and provide a platform to enable an organization to create that data-driven um, layer um, to link together all the tools that they needed. And we sort of started to think, well, what's an example of a good um, a, a, a way of metadata work is working very well? Um, and one of the examples we looked at was photographic metadata. So if you think of a digital camera today, um, when you take a photograph, an awful lot of information is captured about where you were, um, the time, date, settings of the camera and things, and that's captured in a standard way and stored with the photo. So when you then load it up into a program, um, you know, sort of a photograph management program, all of that metadata is available and then you can add to it and share it. Um, and that's really what we want to enable with all types of data. Um, um, since most data, particularly within a business, has no metadata associated with it. So we came up with uh, what we call the, uh, the, um, the Metadata and Governance Manifesto. And this talks about the requirements for um, managing metadata that's required by a data-driven organization. Uh, so automation is key, open standards, um, open interfaces, making this metadata visible and usable across a wide range of technologies. All of these um, pieces require um, both open source projects and different vendor technologies to come together and work together um, to allow an organization to make better use of their data. Uh, we then looked at what types of data of metadata do we need? And this is a sort of very high level patchwork quilt of the different standards that we brought together to describe the data assets. And that's a broad definition. That's the thing, the um, uh, sort of uh, it's uh, sort of data stores, obviously, uh, feeds and uh, data, you know, so data moving in, in, in different feeds and APIs and uh, uh, event type in um, data sources. Uh, so the wide range, there's the infrastructure that sits underneath it. There's the lineage, that's the flow of processing that actually created the data set. All the different governance um, requirements from policies and terms and conditions, classifications, uh, and different types of procedures that have to happen around data. Glossary describes the meaning of data and you, and, you, and you build sort of ontologies of different domains of, of, of metadata. The collaboration is the feedback from the people who are actually using the data. So likes and comments and uh, reviews and things on the different data assets. Then we've got the data standards and reference data. So this helps to reduce the cost if things are more consistent. Um, and then finally, metadata discovery is, uh, is where you have automatic processes that are looking into the assets and decide and, and basically calculating the profile and various other things um, that are being used. So there's a wide range of metadata. And if I show you the next picture, this is just sort of the next uh, level of detail. It doesn't seem to have been displaying very well. Um, oh, I see. Um, uh, so, so um, sorry, I was a different picture I was expecting. So this picture is showing um, sort of an example of that type of metadata. So at this bottom layer, you have um, the uh, 
um, the sort of structural information. So this is what a lot of people think of when they think of metadata. So the database schema is an example of this structural data and it shows you the fields that are in the data and an idea, there's some sort of symbolic name of what that data means. Um, and then um, the next thing that we add is uh, links to glossary terms, if you remember the glossary. And this starts to give you a much clearer definition of exactly what this means. And there'll be an explanation of, of, of uh, a sort of it, 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 its real definition associated with this label. Uh, and then we can get really fancy and start linking it together to, to show how values relate to one another. So we can start to say, well, these are all part of an employee, which means potentially they could be personal data because we're bringing it together. And then finally, we can be very um, explicit and start to tag uh, the metadata with um, the uh, uh, with uh, flags to say which which uh, pieces are sensitive. And this picture, which was the one I was expecting earlier, shows you um, some of the detail of that metadata structure. And, and for Ajiri, we've actually defined nearly 500 types uh, that are part of uh, the metadata requirements uh, and the linkage between them for a data-driven organization. So it's a huge undertaking uh, that we're, we're uh, um, uh, um, aiming to uh, support uh, through the Ajiri project. I mentioned earlier that um, that we're trying to connect together many different tools and there were many different tools in, involved. So imagine that the fluffy cloud, that's open metadata and governance. That's what the ODPI Ageria project supports. And then it has connection points to all the different types of tools uh, that need to exchange metadata. And it's not just databases. Um, it uh, is reporting tools and security and uh, um, so different developer tools and things like that. So there's a huge range of, um, of uh, uh, values. I see a potential question coming in. No. Nope. Um, and, uh, and so that's really what Ajiri is doing. But of course, um, it's not the world is not a sort of the place where you could just have one single database that everything is connecting to. In fact, many tools have their own database with metadata in them. So what Ajiri is trying to do is to create a peer-to-peer -peer protocol between these repositories to um, allow them to um, allow them to exchange the metadata that they need. So they don't need modifying. Basically, uh, we create connectors that link them together and exchange the metadata that each repository cares about. Uh, the other thing that um, when you start looking at pictures like that, it, it looks quite straightforward. But actually, the real world is multi-cloud, multi-platform, highly distributed. Um, and so our solution has to work in this environment. And again, a single centralized place that everything is connecting to really doesn't work. So when I said this is a peer-to-peer -peer distributed protocol, uh, the orange here that's gone into the, the picture is really showing where the metadata is located and the dotted line shows the integration that Egeria does under the covers to create the illusion that there is one single virtual view of metadata that each of the repositories are connecting to, but actually they are um, uh, they are um, all part of, uh, you know, they, were, they are actually separate, um, but connected through the Egeria protocols. The other thing uh, that uh, makes this a little bit harder is that different capabilities, different technologies have different capabilities when it comes to integration. So for example, a relational database typically is what I would call a passive technology. It has open APIs, but it doesn't send out any notifications when its schemas change. So we need to, to periodically poll it and validate that we've got all the metadata that we, uh, that, um, is uh, all the schema information that's been defined in that repository. So that's a passive um, technology. Um, something like Apache Cassandra is an active technology and it creates an event every time a new schema is created in, in Cassandra in its own format. So all we have to do is to listen um, and then convert it to our format and bring it through. So we have um, specialist servers 
uh, that are sitting, listening or polling different technologies to continuously automate the capture of metadata from different technologies. We also have APIs that, um, uh, that UIs and uh, other sort of scripting tools and things can allow um, sort of more manual capture of metadata as required. And they connect into um, specialist interfaces for the different types of tools, which are then brought into the ecosystem and shared. So when we look at um, the uh, sort of a connected environment, what you see is in the center, there's a thing here called cohort A. Um, and that's um, a set of tools that are sharing metadata. And the cohort is built dynamically. It automatically configures itself as new members join or leave. Um, and when a member joins, uh, they pass information about themselves and that automatically configures the other members so that they can now issue queries on the new member that's just joined the, the cohort. Um, and then connected off of those uh, um, uh, sort of cohort members, as we call them, are other servers, the sort of governance servers that are connecting into different technologies um, and providing um, it, and, and, and sort of gathering metadata. We also push metadata. So in this picture, you can see at the bottom, there's metadata being gathered from different data platforms. But then at the top, um, on the left-hand side, you can see that uh, we're actually pushing metadata to Apache Ranger and a data virtualization tool to dynamically create secured views over the data that's being added uh, to the ecosystem. So even though the metadata is gathered in one tool, it can be consumed and used by a different tool um, um, even though these tools are surrounding the same data. The other thing um, that we need to, to um, be mindful of is when you think about that distributed environment, we've got some, some um, technology that's running in a centralized cloud environment, needs to be highly scalable, needs to be continuously available. We have um, other places where um, it may be a small team that has a variety of requirements. So we might need to sort of have lots of different servers sitting on the same platform so that it, uh, um, so that we have um, a, a sort of multi-tenant or uh, a sort of consolidated environment for small situations. And then in the IoT space, we may need, may need to run on something as small as a Raspberry Pi. And so the Ageria technology has um, a thing called the OMAG server platform that hosts all the uh, integration technology and it can be configured in lots of different ways to allow us to go from the smallest machine up to the largest um, cloud environment using the same technology um, and just by altering it, its configuration. So the aim is that when we um, when an organization is using Ageria, so in this picture here uh, the uh, the blue is uh, the light blue is is Ageria, and you can see that there are lots of different technologies that are connecting and supporting different communities. So there's a sort of community of different professionals uh, connected at each point, and Ageria will gather the metadata that is of, that is of value to that community by their interaction. It uses their interaction and their activity. Um, and its configuration in order to determine what metadata is gathered at any one of those points. But the result is that um, one group of users might create information about a data set uh, that is then shared. Somebody else may add classifications to it to identify where sensitive data is. That might then go on to configure um, a security tool um, um, and may also create reports to the privacy team so that they can see that um, private data is now being deployed to a new location. So you can start to see how the value of, of the knowledge is, is shared and augmented and shared again um, as we bring this, um, this ecosystem together. Now, uh, technology is important, um, but this open source project also focuses on uh, creating um, a secure um, and conformant environment so that uh, technologies from different vendors can be connected together safely and they don't corrupt one another. And also we're interested in, in, in helping uh, people who are trying to transition their organization to become more data driven with education, examples, suggested best practices, 
that then link down into the Ageria technology and, and show how it can be used. Because this is an incredibly complicated topic and there's an awful lot of people being given data oriented roles that uh, um, that they've never done before. And so the the aim um, in the Ageria project is to make sure that we um, we help people as much as possible, um, both in the technology that we provide, but also in the uh, the advice and the best practices that are linked with it. Uh, we are. Um, completely open project. Uh, everything we've done has been created through GitHub. We have a number of uh, companies that are working together to create this common technology. Um, and so everything that uh, we, we show, we use, is available through our various GitHub repositories. Um, this, the, the technology itself is organized into three layers. Uh, there's what we call the developers toolkit at the bottom, which are, is all the libraries and plug points and connector interfaces to allow you to build your own integration environment, depending on the technologies that you, may, you use. Then above that is what we call the integration platform. And these are the pre-built connectors for different technologies. So these are the things you don't have to write. And then there are some um, UIs that make it easier to monitor what's happening in the integration environment. And then finally, we have the governance solutions that sit on top. And they um, exploit the fact that we now have this uh, view of metadata, view of the organization and its operations that has never been visible before. Um, and so the solutions start to take advantage of that um, and allow people to um, a, a more powerful use of the metadata that they've created. So <laughs> that was a bit of a whistle stop tour on um, on ODP Nigeria and what it what it potentially can do for your organization. I have um, some time for some questions. Um, so uh, we can put the question slide up. I don't have a um, any questions there now, but if anybody would like to um, leave uh, anybody got any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Um, otherwise, uh, I will move you over to the links page and you can see here we've got a number of um, uh, press releases and external things, but really everything that you need to know um, is in our, those two GitHub repositories that I'm showing you. The data governance one is the one that contains all the best practices um, and then the Ageria one is the source code and all the documentation for the Ageria software. So that's it. So if there are no questions, I think we have finished. <laughs>